Welcome. Looks pretty dim in this room considering I've changed the lights. Let me change for the worst. <laughs> I just thought we'd run over a few things today. Nothing in specific, nothing specifically, but we'll just touch on a few subjects. One of them is the um, the fact science tells us that it's 10,000 kilometres from the Arctic centre to the equator. So if that's 10,000 kilometres, that means the, uh, you know, that would be the radius, right, of the circle. So around the equator, that would make it 62,832 62,832 kilometres around here. And they're telling us, they're telling us it's only 40,000 around here, around there. Because obviously they're working on a ball and they're saying it's 10,000 kilometres from the Arctic to the equator. But whether they think it's a ball or what, whether it's flat, at the end of the day, it's still that measurement from there to there. They're telling us it's 10,000 kilometres. I'd go with that, but at the end of the day, that's the radius. From that diameter, it would be 62,800 uh, kilometres. What's going on there? Um, that's the one thing we can rely on, everything I understand. It's the one thing we can rely on is this, this measurement here. <laughs> it's the one science works on because it's the equator too. So, who's right? Who's going to find out for us? Going to trust science or what? Anyway, um, because at the end of the day, trust that measurement, this, this comes into it. So, I'll show you something. Who's seen this in alchemy? But what it says, <laughs> that actually means it's referring to the flat earth because th this is what it is, this is what it is. You see, I haven't drawn this to scale but obviously it's, it goes like this, oh sorry. This is how it works. The two triangles, there and there. There's the gap. The gap is the tropics. This is the flat earth. Now, this, this triangle here, that's the pitch of the great Khufu Pyramid. You know, some sides will go 51.5, some said 51.2, or 51.83. But uh, you take this, 360 divided by seven equals that. Seven of this, seven of these, make up the circle, right? But if you come back out here, follow that down, and draw that, use it as one big triangle, you get two more, right? That then becomes nine. You now step into nine, the non-physical numbers that we do not see and understand to make up to make up the full perimeter of the the southern the southern part of the um, flat earth. It's all beyond the human and mind understanding. It's the non-physical we do not see. But that's what that that's, that's what that is referring to. Because the, the, the snake represents the magnetic field. Earth is under this magnetic field. The round it represents round for a starter, the round flat earth, 
in the magnetic field, the snake, the beast, it's the magnetic field. Done a lot of videos on that. That's and that's the two triangles. These are the three in sacred geometry numbers, the non-physical numbers. As Tesla said, you understand the number 369, you will find the keys to the universe. That's where I started, understood how the moon and all that works. Um, forget what that was about. Something goes with it. <coughs> the 3D, the, oh, the angles of the 3D, all the sides up to it. <coughs> That's just one little thing. There's a there's a uh, diagram of inside here. This is how the planets sit, like this. <coughs> just like this cocktail glass. It's sitting in there like that. But we, we see it on these angles. So if you can imagine one, the planet here, and what's happening is the other one comes around. <coughs> it, they sit like that. Science is coming to realise this. I just saw something on uh, YouTube. It's starting to wake up. Things like um, deviation in orbits. Deviation in orbits. They have the sun there and they think they're all doing this. It's not the sun they're going around, they're going around the black hole. The black hole at the centre. And it appears it's doing this from this angle we get. From the sky, the, the elliptical look. The sun is in fact, would be, if it appeared to go like that, The sun, the sun would be on the track, but because the sun moves ahead of it, they're never get, they're never catching the sun. It's only the sun catches the planet, because the sun is on the perimeter of the black hole, and it's always racing ahead of all the other celestial bodies outside of it in the white, in the in the um, cocktail glass. So the planets are, they, they sit on this boundary wall out here as it gets bigger and bigger, <coughs> comes out. And they're coming around heading, heading for the sun, but the sun's always shooting ahead. It's the moon that's outside the uh, sun. That's why we get that going further, way out further than the sun in the uh, tropic region there. So that's what it looks like they're looking at it side view. This is the magnetic field out here. So we've got the vacuum suction back down here creating the electrical circuit straight down there. Milky Way is out there. All out here in the magnetic field around around the sun in here. Then there's your background stars. Um, what else have we got? Um, I just saw a, a, DB, a YouTube video um, all about the, uh, he calls it sacred geometry, but he's a, <coughs> he's a spinning baller. So the whole thing regards the spinning ball. Yet I can make the whole video represent the flat earth. There's no difference. That's the stupid thing about it. They want you to think you live on a spinning ball and so sideways on a spinning ball. They think this is more logical, living like this and like this, than on a flat plane. This is floating out there in la la for them, spinning at all sorts of speeds, flying with astronomical speeds, while you're living on the outside of a spinning ball, living on the outside of it. Enclosed in the atmosphere, of course, but that's all garbage as well. That's another story. Instead of just living vertically on a flat surface out there in la la land. It sounds more logical standing on a flat surface, doesn't it? And living on the side of a ball. <coughs> what was I getting at? Oh, so anyway, yeah. 
it's a, it's a, just a joke. And it, they mention um, they talk about the Great Procession in the in the in the Earth doing its wobble like this, and that's what it does. It's a vortex. Of course, it'll do that. There's your hourglass. Choke point where the sun is. Negative. Positive. All the negative goes up to the sun. Flows up here. And comes out positive. Yeah, with me. I'm all over the place, I know. But I've uh, seen this. Now this happens in the magnets. You can get that effect if you use two magnets. Ferrocell fluid and stuff helps you observe it, but um, you'll get that. You'll get that image if the uh, if the uh, upper magnet is up higher, I think, or on on a slight angle. Because you've got the elliptics, the um, yeah, the elliptics, perihelion, perihelion, aphelion. But uh, you'll find it in, in magnets. If you lower the magnet, um, that 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 um, what would you call that shape? That shape shape parts and splits and forms its forms the outer. It spreads out and flows around the outer perimeter, the southern field. That's when the sun goes from aphelion to Perihelion, the magnetic field, because it's all magnet, magnet, you know, um, uh, plasma, magnetic, it's all electrons. So it's facing up, facing up. So you've got that that look there for the northern summer. But as soon as it comes past equilibrium, the equinox, it's being up there, get the equinox down. It's coming down. The magnetic field drops. And it's connected with the sun overall then you get the direct directional flow of the sun's light don't you because it's all about frequency isn't it high frequency get more of a narrow band and that's what the sun's all about frequencies because all the frequencies come from this black hole vortex in here higher frequencies Lower frequencies, smaller wave bands at the beginning. So it's directional and then gets out through the atmosphere, different layers to create all the light and the all works on light and frequencies. So that's how you get your seasonal change in the magnetic field, the sun right out south. So it just changes the frequency. It's all about frequencies from in here. So the frequencies change and then you get your directional shooting of the sun for your for days. That's my take on it. What else have we got? <clears throat> yeah, do you think that works on a spinning ball? No. Oh, it works on a flat earth. It's all there. Check it out. Astrolabe. Um, what else have we got? There's a nice picture. True. So true. There's another one. Okay, that's that of the camera. Um, what are we talking about? This, um, this is about um, why well, we went from 360 days to 365 days. You see the Egyptian tale there about Thoth gaining the five extra days for Newt, the sky goddess, to make, to have babies. 
in those five holy days, which is in the beginning of September. So it's all about, you've got, uh, you know, the equinox here, but, you know, you've got uh, Aphelion, Perihelion down here. It's that uh, the five days is when everything's level. So at this spot here, when everything's level, <coughs> equilibrium, the sun's not doing anything. That's where you lose your five days. It's the springs on both sides. 2.5 September, 2.5 March. The equinoxes, 2.5 days, and so it's a there, okay, so you get your 360, 180 each side, and then you get your five days in between. That's the story there, so I'll read you this tale from the Egyptians, the Egyptians left us. Coming into the aid of Newt, the wisdom god Thoth, devised a plan to outmaneuver Ray, Re, Ray, Ra, whatever. Thoth presented himself to the moon deity uh, Khonsu, who was a great lover of the game Senet, and he challenged him to a series of matches. The stakes, however, were quite unusual. Thoth proposed that if he won, his prize would be a measure of the moon's light, 172 to be exact. And that's the 52 minutes the moon is delayed every day. Konsu was so confident in his abilities that he accepted. However, much of his surprise, much to his surprise, Thoth thoroughly outplayed him in the whole series. In claiming his prize, Thoth took the light that he had won from the moon and gave it to Newt. So there's, there's more to it when it comes to the moon than what I've just said about the sun, the, the 360 to 365 days. Um, I did it way back, but I can look further into it if I could. Um, so this transfer caused the Earth orbit to shift and increase its length. Now you got to listen to this because people don't see this message. They don't read it the right way. They just read it literally, just like the Bible. So we'll go back here again. In claiming his prize, Thoth took the light that he had won from the moon and gave it to Newt. This transfer caused the Earth orbit to shift and increase in length from 360 days per year to some 365. This, is, this has been all interpreted from the original languages. language. This transfer caused the Earth orbit to shift and increase in length. See, I'm not sure if they've used the right word orbit. But right there, it's just what I explained. You've gone from equilibrium, the equinox, Earth orbit to shift just means go down to the southern. Increase its length. Increase its length. So you've now flipped from aphelion to perihelion. Magnetic fields flipped to send its field out here. Then you get the directional sun. So, this is the bigger field, isn't it? Increase its length. It's longer, look. People just think I'm trying to interpret it in my way, but they don't, they just don't understand it. Nothing is what it seems. People just read things literally without thinking. When someone comes along and tells them otherwise, they just think, oh yeah, that's just your inversion, that's just, just your version. You're just trying to make it fit the picture. So this transfer caused the Earth orbit to shift. So spinning ballers, yeah, they'd love that. They just think, you know, it's part of their spinning ball theory. Shift to increase its length from 360 days per year to some 65. So they're talking about that point there. And that's, that's the cause, the variance. It's always been like that. They, yeah, some of these ancient... There's videos on ancient knowledge and stuff. They start trying to tell you that, you know, the world's changed. Something dramatic happened. But anyway. Uh, Newt was thus able to give birth 
on the extra days as they were not part of the true earth, i.e. the 360 cursed days of Ra. This is when Newt was allowed to give birth. And these were the five holy days. The 6th of September, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th. Yeah, 11th. So between the 6th and the 11th is five days. And that's, that is in, at the equinoxes. The, the major one is September, because that's when the moon goes further in north. That's when she really gives the birth. Getting in, getting in there close with the sun. The male and the female, as above, so below. So that's that story there. And it was able to give birth on the extra days as they were not part of the true earth, i.e. Three, six, five, cursed days. See, cursed? They're not cursed. It's, see, this is, like, this is in religion. They make out the divine is bad because of the death, a man's death on that time. But that's the death of him as that in the physical world, his physical understanding, is born again. This is when you, you find people born again and start going to church out of the blue. That's what that, that's all about. So Newt was thus able to give birth on the extra days as they were not part of the true earth year. Five children were born. New gods to enter the world. These, these aren't from outer space or anywhere. They're humans who've been awakened. Their third eye is opened. They start using more of the right side of their brain. They know way more than the average do. Each god was born on one of the five extra days. And it's to do with the moon, because when I say September, it's because the moon goes further and north. And it has to be a full moon at that period. And that, that full moon, the magnetic force of a full moon, we all know what that does with tides and stuff, coinciding with... Um, I lost my train of thought there. Yeah, 3 o'clock, 3.30 a.m. in the morning. That's... It's a divine time on earth. That's the most energetic time when it comes to magnetism on the earth. And then when you get the full moon in that same time period, bamo, it affects the human brain, the fluid in the brain. That's when you, the flood is created. The water is released from around the pineal gland, the gland and the pineal gland is exposed. Just like the Noah story, the boat on the mountain there. That's what that's all about. Now, in addition to the changes that took place respecting the Earth, the loss of the moon's light was no less significant to the moon itself. As a celestial body, it was greatly weakened and became smaller in the sky. It's um, not waxing. What's the other one? The opposite side. Indeed. Prior to its loss, it was a bright body and a visible emitter of light, much like the sun. Following the change, however, it ceased to continuously shine and was forced to go into hiding to periodically recuperate. It could only shine for a time before... Time before. Meaning, they're basically telling it it was the magnetic force of the full moon. Uh, it only lasts so long. And this is in religion when they talk of a time. At a time. A time. And half a time. All religion does not know what that is. I know what it is. When it is. What it represents. Uh, so. See all the celestial bodies get rejuvenated by the sun. The moon goes into the sun every month. But a special time is those five divine days when the, when the moon goes right and close because what happens is the sun, you know, it's the egg, cosmic egg, it's leveled up, leveled out. So it shrinks. You've got an elliptic on the angle, right? When you come up level, it's... Imagine the vortex water, you're on an angle, it's, it's going to elongate, come level, more circular. 
it brings the moon into the sun. There's those big tidal variants that you get in um, September spring. Um, here's something else. Now, in addition to the changes that took place respecting the Earth, the loss of the moon's light was no less significant to the moon itself. As a celestial body, it was greatly weakened and became smaller in the sky. Indeed, prior to its loss, it was a bright body and a visible matter of light, much like the sun. Following the change, however, it ceased to continuously shine and was forced to go into hiding to periodically recuperate. It could only shine for a time before going dark. And thus, the very phases of the moon as we know them today came into being. Well, see, the moon, people go through awakenings uh, through various stages. And, and it depends on the, it's all to do with constellations and the stars and that. And it's the, um, the phase of the moon sometimes. If it's in their if it's in their star sign that sort of thing the position of the moon, so <clears throat> so you're getting different levels, but the ultimate level is the the one all religions are talking about, and that's the divine one. That in September, between three in the morning and three thirty, that was the Jesus story. Uh, everybody's seen this. Didn't quite get the China the Asian guy. That's the that's the most obvious one, the Asian guy's face, but he's over here, you can't see it. But what a joke, eh? Right in your face. I mean, sure, someone can run around finding pictures of other people that match, but no, nah, no, nah, it's, it's there. It's in your face. They never died. No one's put at the end of one of those skyrockets <laughs> to go into La La Land. I thought I found a science book. Uh, 